Hello and welcome to episode 31 of Sheepdog Says. I'm Sheepdog and uh, yeah, I've just got back from my mum and dad's this weekend. The big topic at the moment is the fact that my mum and dad are looking to uh, move away at some point in the near future. Um, my dad's coming up for retirement, he's just applied for it at work and he's hoping that he'll get it. And if he does, that means that he will be able to basically sell his house and move where he wants to. Um, he's kind of debating at the moment. Well, I say debating, he's got two options really, maybe three if you count my sister. Um, he either moves near us, moves near my sister, or he wants to move near his mates in Norfolk. Um, they're living in like this retired place for old people basically where they walk all day and they, you know, go out to pubs and breweries and stuff. So it does sound quite good. It sounds nice to be living out in the sticks in Norfolk. Um, he's, you know, he's, he's got his heart set on it, I think, but my mum's more inclined to want to live near like, grandkids and stuff like that and just generally see more of us, I guess. It's a bit of an irritation that they want to move to Norfolk because it's further away than where they live now. It takes longer to get to them there than it would to get to their house where they are now. Um, I know that's pretty selfish, but it it we don't do it that often as it is. If it's going to be even further, I worry that we're not going to see them that often. Maybe they should come see us more. That's a conversation I should have with them. But anyway, it did make me think about how my wife and I had a very similar debate in the early days of our relationship. When I first met her, I lived in Hatfield. She lived in Coventry. She was from Peterborough. And I was from Essex. So when we met, it was very much, oh, I live in Hatfield, you live in Coventry, let's commute back and forth. I used to I used to get something like £500 a month bursary and I'd spend about 250 of that on train fare and coach fare to visit her. I'd spend about 50 of that on noodles and the rest would just go on entertaining her when I was visiting her. I don't even know what the maths would be there, but... Basically, I managed to stretch that very far by just buying cheap Riceland, Riceland? Iceland noodles. Not Riceland, that's the local Chinese. Um, when we were there, we decided that because I was at university still, I was training to be a nurse, which I can cover off in another, another video because I never obviously did that in the end. Um, we decided to move to Nebworth, of all places. And out of all the places we've kind of lived, that's the one that doesn't make any sense. Like, we went... We moved to Nebworth, then we moved to, I think, Peterborough briefly. I tried to kind of live up here and get into it, but didn't like it. Got homesick, so we moved to Essex. Realised Essex is horrific. <laughs> it's a horrible place. It's really dirty and grimy and unhappy. So we moved back up here. But in that weird little bubble uh, in the middle, we lived in Nebworth for a full year. And... Um, I guess talking to my parents about where they want to live and stuff like that got me thinking about this and then it started making me think about when the year we lived there and just how many stupid things happened in that year and I've covered some of them in the past I know I have but I mean I want to kind of go through them a bit more on here because I think it's you know a good platform for it um, so living in this house we inherited a lot of the previous tenants furniture I don't really know how she got it in the house in the first place but once it was there she was very much of the opinion of, I don't really want to take it back out. You can have it. So my first attempt at being an adult, we, we took all the stuff. We, we, we kept it going for probably six months and then we decided we wanted a new sofa. Um, that became a pattern that, um, you know, we, we, we tended to buy a lot of sofas over the years. We finally got one that I'm not that happy with, but my wife's happy with it. So let's keep going. But at the time we, we hadn't bought any and this was quite exciting. But what were we going to do with the old one? Um, we needed to get rid of it. So I tried to get it out the door, couldn't get it down the stairs. I have no idea how they got it in. So me thinking outside the box, I stopped by the local DIY shop and brought this massive wood saw, all these jagged teeth on it, came home while my wife was out, and well, she was then my girlfriend, and just sawed it down the middle, just cut straight down the middle of this, I think it was a single seater sofa, straight down the middle of it, and then I just bundled one knot down the stairs, went down after it, threw it out on the front garden, and then I went back up and bundled the other one down and did the same. So when she came home from work, she just kind of said, what the hell is this? And I explained to her, I'd solved the problem, it was done. Um, and she was like wondering how the hell we were gonna get rid of it. But Nebworth is unlike a lot of places these days, they actually had a council that come around and pick stuff up for you, so it was quite good. I just called them, they came around, they put it on the back of their lorry and they went. I solved the problem. That was an early indication to her that I was a man who could get things done, or a maniac. 
she should have seen the warning signs really then and ran but she didn't which is interesting really i think she probably secretly likes the insanity um, there was another funny thing we lived in like a, a masonette basically so we were above a house um, another house sorry and there was loads of other masonettes around us and i remember one day this couple just kept having these blazing rows. I imagine it was probably the sort of place that lots of people were living in the first budding years of their relationships. So we weren't kind of alone in the fact that we hadn't known each other long and it was all a bit new. But this one day, this couple had been shouting at each other for hours. And so I think my wife mentioned it was doing her head in and it was doing my head in. She was going to go to bed because she had a headache. She went upstairs and then... I'm just sat at my computer, which, you know, I used to do a lot more than I do now. I used to just sit there, be tapping away, whatever. And I thought, I've had enough of this. So I pulled open the window and I just went, Will you shut the beep up? The whole street was deadly silent. We never heard another noise from them ever, as long as we were there. Uh, I, I actually genuinely checked a couple of days later that he hadn't murdered her. I wanted to check there was no crime scene tape up or anything like that right around the corner from us because they'd been arguing for weeks and then that just seemed to make them go a lot more quiet and a lot, I don't know, maybe they just thought, yeah, we need to end this. But again, got stuff done, was learning to be, you know, Mr. Independent House Owner. I shouldn't have been left on my own very often though. My wife must have learned this eventually. One of the weirdest things that ever happened while we were there I was um, walking our dog, Molly. Well, actually, that's one thing. We, we got our dog by with our first child, our dog, Molly. Um, <clears throat> she was a nightmare. We, we tried letting her off the lead to try and get her used to coming back to us. But every time we'd let her off, she'd dart. We lived next to a big farmer's field, so we'd let her off there. And it was like field, 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 main road, railway line. So we'd let her off over here. She'd instantly run straight that way towards the railway line. And you'd see a train coming and you'd be calling her and calling her thinking, oh my God. She'd bolt off down the road and I remember my wife just screaming, Molly, no. And she just stopped and came back. We never let her off her lead again after that point. Um, I'll have to do a story sometime. Next time it happens, I'll use that as an excuse to do a story of all the times she's got out. Because it's ridiculous how many times I've had to chase her around town. But um, So we would take her on regular walks on her lead and not and be really regimented with her. And I think one of these days she'd got off her lead and I was chasing around the farmer's field and around the roads and everything. I think I don't know if her lead had snapped or whatever, but while I'm carrying her back, a parrot landed in our front garden. And I'm looking at it thinking, <coughs> parrots are pretty expensive. They're pretty long-term pets. You don't get a parrot for a 10-year job. They're usually, what, 50 years plus? I'm pretty sure, and I might be wrong here, and I probably sound really dumb, but I'm pretty sure up until relatively recently, Winston Churchill's parrot was still alive. Because I remember my great nan met it and was telling us that it had learned all these swear words from him and stuff like that. But this parrot was there, just sat in our garden, like little grass verge outside our, our masonette. And um, I kind of just snuck past it because I didn't want to disturb it. And when I went in, I, I kind of rang the RSPB and said, there's a parrot on my garden probably need to come and catch it it looks like it's someone's pet and they said well we're a charity we don't have the money to be doing stuff like that just leave it it'll be fine and i'm thinking well no that's that's just got to be somebody's pet and it's you know it's out there it's going to be a nightmare i don't know how you'd even bring a pet bird back you would you just open your window and assume that it was going to come so i started then pondering how i would get this bird i was thinking i'm going to get it back in and then I'm going to put up signs and I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to just solve the problem because I'm a problem solving man now. I live in a house with my partner. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't really, I don't, I don't know anything about birds. I don't know what I'm doing. And I didn't have any, I couldn't like set up a trail of seed around into my door and up the stairs or whatever and just lure it in like that. So I did the next best thing. I got my speakers from my computer. I put it all up next to the window and I went online and I googled parrot mating noise wav because uh, back then there's no such thing as YouTube and there's no such thing as all of, like Spotify and all of that. But there were sites that just had little, I don't know, less than a megabyte big wav files. So you just click it and it'd go. <laughs> so I just sat there for about 15 minutes trying all these different sounds in the hope I'd attract this bird. And I had it turned up as loud as it would go. And I mean, I look back now and I think, what on earth must the neighbours have thought of me? Because 
I don't know how it was all in the same year as me shouting at them to be quiet, but <laughs> that's just that's some messed up passive aggressive um, abuse. I was just letting these screeches out, and nothing was happening. So I went back out, had a look for the parrot, and it, it I saw it down the road. But as I kind of got close to it, it started flying off again. So I went back. I thought I'll try the noise a bit more, see if it works. Nothing happened. When my wife came home, I, I trying to explain to her why the computer was set up by the window, why there were speakers up against the glass. She's looking at me like, you. She. I think her pretty much first words were, "You know, there are wild parrots in the UK, right?" And I sort of look at her thinking, "No, there's not. That's that's not true." Um, so I kind of snuck to my computer and I had a look and sure enough, apparently we have hundreds of parrot like birds in the UK that this could have easily been and they're just not seen that often. And, um, I just, uh, I kind of just dragged all my stuff back to where I normally sit and forgot about it. I was just like, okay, fair enough. Never saw anyone looking for their pet parrot. Never saw any kind of things put out to say that, like, you know. This is, you know, this is what I'm looking for. So I'm guessing it was just a wild one. Never saw it again. Um, I think she said she saw like a greeny yellow one at one point or another down the road. And this one was reddy, yellowy sort of colours. Um, but I, who knew? Apparently Nebworth it has loads of wild parrots flying around it. Um, that place was nice though. We only moved in the end because I couldn't afford to continue doing my course. We had a lot of luck while I was there, while I was living in that area. Uh, my sister likes to remind me about one time that uh, there's the Galleria in Hatfield, it's their shopping centre, and I went there to... I think I was walking home from uni, and wherever I was going along the way, I just happened to look down and see 80 quid balled up in a roll on the floor, just picked it up, looked around, thought, oh, it's a result, and just went off about my way. Loads of fluky luck like that kind of kept me going, but eventually we just ran out of steam, and I, I just couldn't do it anymore, and we had to leave, but... I think to myself, if I was weighing up places to live, that, you know, that area would still be up there. It's a very nice green place. It's got everything you need and parrots, apparently. But um, yeah, let me know about places you've lived, weird things that you've had happen. If, have you ever seen a wild parrot in the UK? Because I haven't since. What would you have done to catch it, maybe? I did have a look around to see if I had any of those fishing nets you get at the seaside. Um I thought I might have had one to hand then, like, I, uh, like I'd like i been waiting just in case a parrot appeared. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't, up, hasn't happened up here. We have fe uh, pheasants and stuff like that, which aren't the same, I know, but none of them have ever come into our garden so far. I guess if they did, the the uh. I was going to say I'd want to cook them, but I wouldn't. I'm not a monster. My wife's a vegetarian, so it'd just go to waste. I'd probably want to hide it from the farmers. But I'm not going to start playing pheasant noises over the speakers. Although I'm tempted to see what would happen if I did. Because I imagine I'd have better speakers now. It'd probably sound more realistic. If I'd had modern technology then, maybe I'd have caught it. I don't know what I'd have done if I had caught it. I don't know what it would have done to my house. We had a pigeon come down our chimney once at our old house. And it trashed the place. And we had to have it all washed and debugged. Because it, oh, oh, I hate to think. Anyway, I'm rabbiting now. Thanks for watching. Let me know stuff that's happened to you that's similar. Um, give me a subscribe, a like, and a comment. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.